Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry everything looks super exposed right now, but glory be to God today. So look guys, I welcome back to another video. I so sorry I didn't even just address that and address you guys I'm so glad to be back here today happy Wednesday um, I think right here might be a better place to put you guys right now um, I'm at the park and I came to spend time with the Lord today at the park in a different scenery um, and the purpose of that was I'm sorry if you hear a whole bunch of people but um, the purpose of that was to get out of my normal to get out of routine to get out of what i'm used to and start being intentional with my um relationship with my heavenly father so i uh, just want to put that out there that's why i'm at the park today it's super cold like it's like 57 right now but i'm dressed accordingly but i'm still cold but i'm just a person that's naturally really really cold but I wanted to come on here really quickly um, and speak about um, the purpose of intentionality in our walks with Christ. So I, I've i been, and I think a lot of people be saying that, people have been asking me, people have been telling me, but this is actually a fact. People actually have been coming to me a lot recently regarding wanting to live a submitted life to the Lord, but not with wanting to give up the desires of their heart. So just now, I'm reading Genesis 19. And let me just say, the book of Genesis is so much revelations in there. So I was having a conversation today and I was like, I told them that we believe the wind is there because we can feel it, but can we see the wind? I'm cold because it's windy, but I cannot see the wind, right? So that's um, sort of equivalent to the same thing with God a lot of people feel like because they can't physically see him with their natural eyes and you can see him with your spiritual eyes but a lot of people have not yet tapped into that so that's a whole different conversation but um, a lot of people struggle with their relationship with the Lord because they believe that they only can see something to believe it now God is a God that would if you ask him he would show you so if you ask God to reveal himself, may not just be in the physical sense, he may reveal himself in the spiritual sense, but you have to also be open to receiving that as well. So all in all, the purpose of um, intentionality is the same way that we do that with our everyday lives in all the areas that I just listed, the, the jobs, the friendships, the relationships, we should be doing the same thing with our walks with Christ. Why? Because God actually cares about intentionality. It shows order, it shows structure, it shows obedience to him. And I was telling a friend earlier today that we don't get to... Um, we don't get to have time with God. It's an honor and it's a privilege to do so. And I was explaining to her that in the Old Testament, the people had to go through a priest in order to hear from God. It was no direct conversation or communication between them and God because it was not a privilege. Jesus didn't come down yet. There was no, you know, uh, crucifixion at that time or anything of that nature in order to sacrifice to receive something from God they would have to sacrifice literally a physical animal or physical thing to honor and privilege to have that time with the Lord and it's such a blessing to do so that um, a lot of people take it for granted it's just like when we pay for a gym membership um, we're more likely to go than when we have a class for free so we should treat it as if it's a not just like we're buying God but we should also treat it as if I'm not obligated but it's a privilege to be here so because we got a, we got this free gift from Christ for free it's a privilege so I say all that to say is a lot of people struggle with the intentionality aspect is because they're not willing to give up their former desires so I have a question for anybody who still struggles with the desires from their past you still want to drink you still want to smoke is what have you not let go of what have you what are you still in covenant with so what we don't understand is a reason why there's a lot of times such a strong attachment to our former life our former desires is because we have made a covenant with these things covenant means two things are two things two people whatever are joining 
to make establishment of something so because of that a lot of people are in covenant with their sins still they have not yet understand that there's a free gift of jesus to deliver them to set them free from that they can walk in liberty if they allow themselves to but it's a choice to do so so god's such a gentleman okay god is not going to force you he's not going to pull it down your throat he's giving you the option and he chooses you yes he does but it also was my duty to say okay i'm gonna choose to follow god i could have made the decision to disobey or obey him but i made the, the decision to obey and to make the connection to scripture is in the book of genesis what i was just reading in genesis 19 um lot was sent to the city of sodom and g because i cannot say that word but uh, they was he was sent there to go get the people who were still there that was still considered a righteous person because god was going to sweep that entire city clean because they were filled with sin and it grieved god's heart um it grieved god's heart so god was gonna completely diminish that entire city and sodom i mean not sodom sorry um lot had a conversation with um god and he was like well if there's righteous people here um can you help can you save them from being swept up in the end god agreed and he said that yes he would save the righteous people um and not wipe the whole city just because the population of the city was um just in sexual immorality and just a whole bunch of things and that god just completely wanted to wipe it all out they had no regard for the lord they did their own thing so anyways i said that because lot went there to go get the people that were considered the righteous people and as they were leaving they were going out into the wilderness and just like the people of israel lot's wife looked back what that means is she became a pillar of salt what that means is that she have not yet gave up her treasures in her heart so there's a scripture that says where your treasures are so your heart is or something like that but what that means is she has not yet wanted to give up her desires of her heart she's seen the opportunities in that city and seen it as the end all be all so god gave her a choice between obedience and life and disobedience and death in that case lot wife ended up having she got killed she died and yes we have the free gift of jesus and that's i'm gonna get there in a second but she passed she died god she was caught up in the city so she died she chose to not follow her husband and the family and go into the freedom with the lord um moving forward and just like the people of israel they looked back and that's why they were suffering for so long because they kept they could not give up their sin they could not give up their treasures in their heart they could not see the free gift they could not see the uh opportunity of life eternal life even though it was not materialistic so um one thing lot's wife was was very materialistic and, and worldly woman there was no description of her name or like certain things that she did but we do know through scripture that she failed to nurture her children spiritually they even slept with their father that's a whole other discussion but the result of her disobedience led her to die so we know that we don't have to face a natural death when we sin now against the lord praise god um we know that now we are offered a gift of repentance so you can simply do that so i just want to encourage anybody uh, wanting to fully submit their lives to the Lord I will ask I will tell you to ask yourself what am I in covenant with and then once you recognize what those things are are you in covenant with your um, addiction to alcohol with your addiction to drugs are you in covenant with your boyfriend are you in covenant with your girlfriend are you what are you in covenant with what's up y'all I'm back home. Sorry, this light looks all yellow. I actually don't know why my living room light does that. I think I need to get a daylight bulb for the living room lamp. But I love this lamp. I might get rid of it. This is what it looks like. It's like the arch lamp. Cute. Don't mind this curtain up here because we figuring it out. Okay? Ain't nobody up in this house but me and my husband. So there's that there's that on that um just got back home from spending the afternoon with god i was at the park it got super cold after a while but from the last clip i left right after that um i got this heat up on blast which i'm about to put it up a little bit more because 
I don't mess around with nobody's nobody's cold. I actually oh it is up. Great. I actually don't like the cold at all. And even though it was like 50 something degrees today, to me it felt like it was about negative 20. And it's crazy because you would think that somebody who came from New York, a place like New York, will be able to be used to the cold. But I think that um, you would think that somebody from New York will be used to it by now. But honestly, I am not. I'm not used to it by now. Um, I think that being in the South has actually played a big part in me being spoiled. <laughs> it actually has played a big part in me being spoiled because I actually cannot tolerate this cold at all. I get in the car, out the car, into my destination, or into my house. Y'all, I'm back. I am back again. Oh wait, this police, hold on. <laughs> all right, we're back in action. There was some police just, just guarding the school that I'm passing by right now, but um, I want to just check in to see how y'all doing because there is so many new things that's happening for me and I feel like I don't be asking you guys, so I deeply apologize. I actually genuinely be wanting to know how you guys are doing, so feel free to comment in the section box and let me know how you've been feeling, how your mental health is, how can I pray for you guys. Um, if you didn't know, I keep you guys in prayer. Um, and that's just it. I keep you guys covered in prayer, so I would love to know if there's anything if you want to privately message me feel free to reach out and <clears throat> put me on you don't have to go into details or anything but i definitely want to keep you guys guarded in prayer so let me know how can i better serve you guys in that area i don't know where this man is at he told me to be here at a certain time and guess what he not even here y'all he not even outside he not even ready but I did want to say, I just made a post. If you guys don't follow me on Instagram, go do that, please. Go follow me over there, because as much as I, I kind of post consistently, I guess you can say, I post pretty consistently over there. Um, but I am encouraging you guys to follow me on social media, because I don't know where to park. Um, I think a lot of people on social media, especially Christian women, speak a lot about marriage and marriage is such a beautiful thing may i say um but people also don't speak about the level of warfare that you will encounter and we have been encountering them and we've been fighting these demons in prayer and intercession okay so <laughs> period but i just made this post because um i still want to bring awareness that as much as people see the glitz and glam, the IG posts, the travel posts, family photos and all that great stuff and may admire marriage, they also need to, these people also need to understand that marriage is a covenant and godly marriages are, yes, the enemy is very much so upset at the fact that you guys are serving God in your marriage he is definitely upset that jesus christ is the foundation of your marriage he's definitely upset that you guys are not fighting each other but you're fighting him he's mad he got nothing else better to do but be mad so now that we're clear and we're aware of that it takes a lot of um tarrying in prayer um it takes a lot of submission to god it takes a lot of weeping it takes it takes that much and and i think because a lot of people just speak about the great things about marriage which marriage is beautiful and i think even in the warfare there's such a beautiful thing about it because in our case when we go through warfare it brings us closer together little does the enemy you know we literally get closer to each other during during warfare we always do and it wasn't like that the first few times when we like begin in a marriage and yes we're still in the beginning stages of marriage but um <laughs> it wasn't like that for the first first or second time but we've been able to target when things are 
um, the enemy and when things require accountability. So, you know, sometimes we like to blame the devil for everything just to place the blame on somebody and not take any accountability that you made that decision. So, yeah, I said that because uh, it's such a beautiful thing when you recognize that you're not fighting together. We're not arguing. We're not going back and forth with each other. We understand that we fight not with flesh and blood, but spirits, principalities, rulers of the kingdom of darkness. And that's a real place, okay? Hell is upset because of godly marriages. We've been doing amazing though. Just went to check in and let y'all know that. He's here. Hey, Puka Bud. Hi. Hi. Are you know him? I smiled because I seen you. I miss you so much. I miss I love you. you. I love you. Ah. Fun fact, guys. I love you. Fun fact, guys. If you haven't noticed, 75% of our conversations are in child. Would you agree? 75%? Yeah. No. But that's our love, you feel me? Yeah. Because, you know, I don't, I don't like the... Um... Say what's up to them, talk to them. What up, man? You know what I'm saying? Just got off. Um, I ain't got too much to say. You know what I'm saying? I just be chilling for the most part. I didn't get any more of chips. Dang, we going now? You want to? Yeah. Can you go inside? Yeah, I'll go inside. It's been a great day. It's been an amazing day today. I was just telling them that that today was beyond my expectations. Hey! We praise God. And also, because hey! I had just made a post. I don't know if you've seen it. I was reading it. You was? Yeah. But I was just telling them how a lot of people idolize the beauty of marriage. And it is it is very much so a beautiful thing. But it then they also beautiful. don't recognize that it makes hell nervous it makes him nervous like the enemy is completely upset with you yeah and when, will do anything yeah the enemy he don't like godly marriage he don't like marriage period but a godly what marriage the they just want to play in traffic today all right my boy uh anyway he hates a godly marriage um it's it's something about the yeah. the two becoming one flesh. Yeah, because now to, because we become what this revelation received is because we become one flesh. Now he's not just fighting just one person. Now it's it's almost like we're tag teaming him. And it's and it's and it's more than that because when two people come together and they're submitted to Christ, it's a three stranded cord. Yeah. Woo! That's a word. You better catch that. It ain't it ain't just me and my wife. It's a three-stranded cord and it's and, God. And God the cord is right. The thickest cord we have is Jesus Christ. Hey. So he's he's right now trembling in his boots. Yeah, he be he be mad. He be mad. So you know. I don't even know how, how we got on that subject. Oh, because I was saying, I was telling them. Oh, uh, the yeah, finish. I made. What else would you were saying? Um, I was saying that the post that I made was in regards to um, people idolizing the beauty of marriage mm -hmm. and how beautiful it is, but don't recognize. Because I feel like there's been such a talk about marriage recently, but people don't understand that you need to be prepared at all given times to pray and cover your spouse and cover your marriage even when things are going great mm -hmm. so you when the time of warfare comes because it will come no matter what you do warfare will come because we still are subjected to it yeah so unfortunately but um it's going to happen but you need to be suited up at all times but you i was just telling them that um all the things that we've been encountering i feel like it has brought us closer together mm -hmm. And, and I feel like it's been able to build our individual spirit band yeah. um, in order for us to better be together. Mm -hmm. So, And it's one of those beautiful things, too. Like, my leader, my, my spiritual father always taught me about the 80-20. 
and not it just being the 80 20 but the 90 10 the 100 and the zero and the whatever the equation you want to make it but having a having a having a person in marriage that's grounded submitted like it helps you so much too because it's like when i don't be feeling myself mm -hmm. like i be thanking god for i was thanking god the other day like lord thank you for a praying wife because you know what i'm saying it makes me when i'm slacking it shows me i'm slacking I'm like boy you better mm -hmm. catch up so it it it, it yeah yeah yeah. So, all in all, I mean, it's still a beautiful thing, and it it's is. something to still be recognized. You not only have right. to be prepared. What what was the word you said? Discipline. Yeah. Like, truly discipline. Yeah. Um, Cause it, it's it's work, not bad work. It's not bad work at all, unless you make it that way. But you know, you gotta put. And I was telling them that we've learned from the countless amount of warfare that we've encountered since being married that not only has it brought us together mm -hmm. um like i was just saying but and like teaching us and building up our spirit band and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i think that um it's been preparing us for um our individual ministries our ministry that we will do together mm -hmm. um and even preparing us for the council of other I don't think I just told y'all that. I think I skipped that part. But even preparing us for the council, uh, other young marriages and godly marriages that that will rise up. So mm -hmm. one more thing though is that I said in the post. If y'all didn't see it, just just go read it for yourself. It's not long at all, surprisingly. But the the post was in regards to all that we've been encountering and just seeing the beauty through it all and how what the enemy meant for evil turned out for our good because we could well off fight each other and the real thing about marriage is a lot of people um don't recognize that you guys are not against each other but you're hey. on the same team so hey. it's easy to like because he's right there it's easy you on for the me same to team. argue back with him be like why are you da -da 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 -da? you know what i mean it's easy to do that because he's right there so mm -hmm. Usually we attack the person that's right there. Like mm -hmm. we argue back with them because they're right there. I can do that. Yeah. However, when you recognize that there's still an enemy out there prowling around looking for somebody to devour, when you recognize that, it's like, wait, we about to fight him together. So exactly. you ready? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. So, yeah. It's it's been it's been a challenge, but it's also um, a beautiful thing, a beautiful challenge because we know that we have the Lord as our defender and we have the Lord as our um, guide through all of this so um, I think I just wanted to share a little bit like raw and transparent because we often share like the glamorous things about marriage and it's not to say that we have any really bad things happening at all this is just like speaking from our experiences as of recently but also the a lot of things that people don't speak about that happens in their marriages which is why they usually account for divorce or separation or whatever the case may be is because they are not fighting together mm -hmm. and fighting the enemy together instead they're just giving in and we ain't doing that baby not right here. we, we ain't not doing right that okay we put you into eternal me. until Jesus come back. You're, 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 you're. If that mean in a hundred years, you're, you're. All you had to do was obey God, and you wouldn't have been mad. But here you are, devil. Yeah. <laughs> like, he mad. He mad. Cause he, kicked, he, cause he can't get forgiveness. Yeah. But we get it every day. Right. Every single day we get new mercies. Yeah. Hey. New mercies. That's every a word. Day. So he mad at that, but it's mm. ain't nobody mad but him. Nobody mad but him. He can but just be mad by himself. By himself, y'all. Okay. But straight straight like that. I'ma just end the vlog here though. Alright, you feel wait, me? Baby, oh, I was about to I was about to end that day. <laughs> I'm just gonna end it right here. Um it's been a long day so far. And I feel like this vlog is gonna be super long. My apologies from now, but I love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in to another video. If you guys enjoy these day in the lives, I know y'all do, so I'm gonna be doing them more often. 
then just subscribe join the family um in the future though there's gonna be family content coming back but it's gonna be on a different level so it's not gonna be what you've been seeing as of recently so just disclaimer for now you guys are gonna be seeing my baby over here on this channel so just just be prepared for that that he's gonna be over here a lot and yes, yeah sir. thank y'all for the love on the last video the challenge that we did with our friends um that was definitely exciting i felt like it kept everybody on their toes but i'm looking forward to doing more of those things but i love you guys and i can't wait to see you guys in the next video